Now that you know how to set up a network diagram with nodes and weighted edges, you can use that diagram to calculate the shortest path. So for this you would be given a start point and a finish point and some sort of network in between. On that network um, you would have some information. So for this one we've got the walking times through some dock tracks. Um, so you know the ones that you see on out on a trail that tell you how long it will get from one point to another while you're walking on those Department of Conservation tracks. So we're going to put those times onto each of the walking track edges as their representation and that's in hours. We're going to label each of the nodes so that we can talk about them easily. And now we're going to have a look at our first way of being able to do this. Right, so this first method is that we set up a tree diagram. So from our starting point A we decide where we could go to. So from A we can go to B and that would have a weight of 4. We could also have chosen D which would have 7 or C which would have 3. Now from that point we've sh shown all of the possibilities from A so we need to move on to the next step of the tree diagram and start with that B that's currently got a weight of 4. So from B we could go to F. Now if we go from B that's already on a 4 and we go along F that's adding another 4 so now we have our total is 8. So as you move through the tree diagram you add them up as you go. From B we also could have chosen to go to D and adding that 1 on from B to D would give us a 5. That gives us all of the options from B because we're not going to go back to A if we're looking for the shortest path. So then we move on to what would have happened if we went from A to D. We could have gone then straight through to G. Adding those up as we go, that's a total of 14. Now we've got to G the end point, so circle that one so you can find it easily again at the end. After that, have a look at what else we could have done. So from A to D, we could have then gone to E which would have added another 2 to our current total, giving us a 9. And then from C, we could have gone to D, which would then add us up a total of 6, and E would have got us an 8. And then we go to the next line over on our tree diagram, so back up to the top with F. We can go from F straight to G, and that gives us a total of 12, and we're finished at G, so circle that one. And then you can see where this is going, all of the rest, you keep going along, looking for the possibilities, filling in the branches and their totals, and any time you get to G as your stop point, circle it. Okay, so now we've got all of our branches ending at G, we can look for which one has the lowest number, and that will give us the shortest path. Of course, that's right here at G9. So we follow through where that shortest path is, and we get that it went from A to B to D to E to G. That gives us our shortest path and its total length is 9 hours long. Now I'm going to show you another method which is called Dijkstra's algorithm. You don't need to know the name of it, but there it is. Um, now this one is one that um, is used if you are trying to program a computer to do this because it, you're able to put in some code to enable it to do this sort of thing. Okay, so what we do is we go to the first node that we want to consider and we think about how we could have got there. So we're not going to consider A. A would have a starting point of zero. Um, we're going to go to B next. So from B, we could have got there from A and that would have taken us a four. Then we look at our next one, C. From A would have been a weight of three. Now move on to the next node. Now at D, we can come from B and that would uh, add us one on from the B value. So the B value at the moment has a four on it. If we add on that one, it gives us a five. So label it with a B five. So that means to get to D from B, that would take us a total of five. There is another option though. We could have come from C. Whoops, I mean A for this next one that we're looking at. So from A directly, it would have been a seven. And then the third option would have been to come from C and C has a weight of 3 on it, so then that path of 3 from C to D would add a 3 and give us 6. So we've got three possible ways to get to D, and we pick the smallest one. And then we move on from there. So the next one we're going to consider is node E. If we get to E from D, we would have, we've, we've now assigned D as having a weight of 5 on that node. So then we add the 2 from D to E, and that gives us 7. Alternatively, to get to E, we could have come from C. 
and if we came that way that would have added 5 onto C so that gives us an 8 so the smallest there is the 7. Then consider F. There's only one way to get to F and that's from B and that uh, is adding on the 4 from B to F to the weight on B which is 4 and that's 8. Then G. We've got, if we come from F, that will add an, on another 4 to F's weight, so that's a 12. If we come from D, then that adds a 7 onto D's weight of 5, so that gives us 12. And if we come from E, that adds a 2 onto E's weight of 7, so that gives us a 9. And then we pick the smallest one, so we've got... E9 as being our smallest one and we've got to our finishing point. So now we need to be able to trace back um, the route that we took to get there. So you look at the label on each one. So from G we can see we got there from E. So we trace that back to be able to figure out our shortest path. So from G to E like this and then once we get to E we look for which one did we circle. We circled that we came from D so follow that back from D we circled the B, so go back to B, and from B the A is circled, so there is our shortest path. A, B, D, E, G, and we already know that the total is 9. Finally, there's a third way which you can do, which is just guess and checking. Um, it's the least elegant of them, which is why I've left it till last, um, and I don't really like this method, but I'm going to show you that you can do it on, on simple diagrams anyway. When you get more complex, it just gets too messy. But this one, basically, you just draw out some paths and figure out how long they are and see if you can do any better, get any shorter ones. So try out different paths. These ones I've just coloured in different um, colours so we can see them. And then once you've tried all of the routes, you find the smallest one and you say that that's the shortest path.